Moving on to uh, Abra, where we're going to be getting the reactions of the latest developments uh, regarding Mapisa Ngakula. We cross live to SABC News reporter Abra Babia, who is outside Parliament in Cape Town. Abra, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We got some political reactions from you a little bit later on. Uh, what else are you hearing from your side? I am now going to be speaking to Siviwe Guahube of the DA, the chief whip of the DA here in Parliament, of course. And she earlier released a statement saying that the party will be calling for a motion of no confidence in the speaker. And I have been asking other political parties if they could indicate if they would be joining. So let me just find out from her. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Have you had any response from other political parties? I know some have told me that they agree. Have you had any response? So we we'll, we are writing to all political parties, um, and in fact, we'll even include the ANC. I mean, if the ANC cannot convince the speaker to do the right thing and to resign, then they must support a motion of no confidence. Because ultimately, Abra, here, the fight is not against, it's not a personal fight against the speaker. The fight here is about the integrity of this institution. You cannot have the head of the legislature being, having allegations of corruption of this magnitude leveled against her, a raid in her home, um, an imminent arrest which has been reported, and then still think that our parliament is, the public trust in the parliament is not being eroded. We've got to be able to insulate parliament from the, from the, from the speaker's personal legal battles. This is a matter that's been years in the making, and so she needs to face the music. So we have, as of yesterday, tabled the motion of no confidence with the deputy speaker because of course the matter um, d deals with the speaker so we've de we've tabled this with the speaker but we also have a now a serious problem where the speaker is on special leave a special leave which is not catered for in the rules um, section 36 or rule 36 in the national assembly rules speaks about conditions under which one can be given special leave and it needs to be by a motion of the house but it seems here that the speaker basically made a unilateral decision to essentially grant herself special leave which is not allowed in terms of the rules and so the, this special leave is nothing but a cop-out in our view the speaker needs to either resign or face a motion of no confidence so in terms of what you just said in this unilateral decision is that something that parties can challenge or will that be done through the motion of course look we are going to bring the motion and of course if the ANC is going to do what the ANC has always done which is to close ranks and defend people regardless of what it is that they are accused of then of course they must explain to South Africans how it is that they expect the speaker of the legislature that is meant to hold the executive to account to be the one who is presiding over this institution they then need to explain to South Africans why they would vote against such a motion when it is clear now that the investigation against the speaker is at an advanced stage we have a speaker in the south african parliament who's had a search and seizure in her home and there was a time where parliament yesterday was indicating that she was going to be essentially jetting off to the ipu um, to go and represent south africa and this is a national embarrassment we cannot have a situation like this and of course how does the executive take us seriously when we say we're calling upon people to be held accountable um, for misdeeds for corruption in the executive when our very own, our very own head of institution is now in the same boat. And that's why there are only two options here, Abra, is that the speaker must resign voluntarily or we bring the motion on an urgent basis. And so the case we are making to Parliament is that this matter needs to be uh, deliberated and voted on urgently. Parliament remains competent until the middle of May. And therefore, there's no reason to say that an urgent motion of this kind um, cannot be considered. Also bearing in mind that Parliament is now being dragged in the mud with every um, uh, you know sort of revelation that is coming out of this case we are seeing that the parliament is the one at the center of this and so we've got to start decoupling the speaker and her legal challenges from the, the parliament and the institution so that we can get back to doing the people's business here where we represent them on that point in terms of separation personal versus parliament the line of communication and how this news came to all of us was that the right line of communication 
absolutely not. The, the parliament and parliamentary channels should not be the ones that are communicating about the speaker's personal legal battles. Uh, the speaker should be communicate that should be communicating all of that on a private basis. But essentially, this is the same thing that Advocate Mkwebane did. This is the same thing that former President Jacob Zuma did, where they use state apparatus to essentially fight their own legal battles. And so we're not entirely sure the legal challenge that the speaker has now launched, who is paying, who's footing the bill, but it absolutely cannot be the South African taxpayer. It cannot be that you can use your position in an institution of this magnitude to defend yourself against having defrauded the very same people who are paying that bill. And so it, it, it is deeply inappropriate that Parliament continues to communicate about the arrest or the imminent arrest of the Speaker through the channels. Parliament should be communicating Parliament's business. There are a litany of bills that are sitting in Parliament. There are a litany of cases that are sitting in front of the Ethics Committee. That's what Parliament should be concerned about. The, the people's business should be what is a priority and not the legal challenges of one person. Thank you so much for your time. That was Iviwe Guahube, Chief Whip of the DA, of course, speaking to us about the blurring of lines between the Speaker in a personal capacity versus the role that Parliament should be playing in how all of this news is unfolding and being communicated to us. We will be on the story for the rest of the day as it unfolds, but for now, back to you in the studio. Thank you so much. That was SABC News reporter Abra Babia.